Biscuit Babe has added a whimsical touch to sweet and savory handmade biscuits here in the Low Country. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with the founder and owner of Biscuit Babe, Jill Beth Massey, for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Jill Beth Massey, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Obviously, you are the founder and owner of Biscuit Babes <laughs> at Charleston. <laughs> and obviously, yeah. yeah, you have some very unique, traditional uh, variety of biscuits. And I thank you for the biscuits that I got last week over in North Charleston. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed them. Yes, absolutely. Went right over to Riverfront Park and ate all of them and then finished my <laughs> run. <laughs> so I ran from downtown Charleston all the way up to Riverfront and then back. So, yeah, that was fun. Oh that was goodness. really fun. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, you know, I, I went on your website recently and you said this quote, the goal is to provide a Charleston area with buttermilk biscuits from scratch, flavor pack, and most importantly, fun. Let me ask you, Joe Beth, how do you have fun in the kitchen making buttermilk biscuits from scratch? <laughs> well, I think it's fun every time I make the biscuits. Um, it's obviously something to do with your hands, very interactive. Um, I'm operating out of an awesome um, shared kitchen space in North Charleston now too, Neighbors Commissary Kitchen. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And obviously I like playing with flavors. So anytime that I'm creating new recipes, it's a good time. Yes, indeed. And how interactive are you with the biscuits? Um, I mean, I like, I mean, the whole kind of, I guess, point of doing this is sharing the biscuits with people. So, you know, as I'm developing recipes, I'm, I'm constantly letting people try them, getting lots of feedback. And um, I've been doing the markets now for a little while as well, which is a great place to kind of, you know, showcase different things that I'm doing. Absolutely. How many biscuits have you provided to the Charleston area thus far? Oh my gosh. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> I, I have no idea. I think I took with me, I did a pop-up this Saturday oh, and yes. maybe I took like 500 biscuits with me there. So it's a little, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you know, I was trying to go on your website to actually buy some more of the biscuits that I, that I love, but it's all sold out. How many pre-orders have been booked thus far? So I actually open ordering. Um, I on Mondays, usually I didn't yesterday since it was Labor Day, but um, I open it at the beginning of the week and take orders for delivery on Fridays, delivery or pickup. So I'll be um, posting soon today um, to open up ordering. And then, yeah, so I'm, I do a couple of markets a week and then um, do the, the deliveries and pickup on Friday. Oh, that's, Friday. Just, that's just amazing. And you, you said this quote, I, I would like to provide you with a vessel for your own personal biscuit creation, whether you, li whether you like it smothered, <laughs> shimmered, <laughs> filled on top. When did you create your own personal biscuit? Oh, my goodness. Um, breakfast sandwich biscuits are my personal favorite. Um, I particularly like using the everything but the bagel biscuit for that. Um, it's a good savory option, loaded up with eggs and cheese. Um, it's a great one to use. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed. And you said this also, too, on your website, quote, there's no wrong way to eat a biscuit. After all, each flavor, though simple, is intentional and impactful and builds on a light and delicate buttery biscuit base. What is that buttery biscuit base with your brand? Um, so I, uh, it's just a really simple recipe, the basic buttermilk recipe, it just has three ingredients. Um, so it's really about technique and making the biscuit itself. Um, and then obviously I'm adding other ingredients for the different kinds. Um, but yeah, I, I really just wanted to offer people something that maybe they're not seeing and then have them kind of expound on that if they want to. What is those items that people are not being able to see or be able to have in their hands or even eat it for that matter? What do you mean? Yeah, well, you say that you, you, you know, you're offering something that people normally don't get oh, to yeah. see or eat. What are, what are those items? Yeah, just kind of different flavors. Um, I guess I didn't really realize how popular fruit biscuits are, um, but I, you know, have had people 
I've seen people around specifically looking for fruit biscuits. And um, that's something I started doing last year uh, with the blueberry and the strawberry. Yes. Um, and then I've done a couple of other specials throughout the year, but those have been really popular and, you know, not it, it and not something that you see normally with biscuits, I feel like. Yes, ma'am. And, and what is your special for the fall? Oh, so I'm working on a lot of things. Um, I just uh, started last week um, playing around with some recipes. I'm thinking pumpkin, of course, some sort of pumpkin spice. Um, I'm going to try maybe an apple cider biscuit, uh, like a take on an apple cider donut, but in biscuit form. Um, just thinking of those like, you know, traditional warm flavors. And I'll still do savory and sweet um, and offer a little bit of everything. Oh, absolutely. And how do you think outside of the box when making a biscuit? You know, for me, I've always liked playing with recipes and just looking at interesting flavors that, you know, I, I eat a lot of different types of food and like to try new things. And um, so for me, it's just thinking about kind of what, what I like and what I think other people will like, obviously. Um, and then going back to just, you know, again, with fall flavors, just thinking of of what people kind of crave, you know, during different seasons and um, obviously using like local stuff as much as I can as well. Oh, absolutely. And <laughs> this might be a silly question here, but how do you actually eat a biscuit? With your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Any way you want. <laughs> right, 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 right. One bite at a time or the whole thing at once. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right, right. And you also said this too, Joanne. You said this. Each flavor, though simple, is intentional and impactful and builds on a light and delicate big, uh, buttery biscuit base. You said this also too, quote, I come from a long line of deaf and purposeful craftsmen on my dad's side and strong and resourceful southern women on my mom's. When the two marry literally and figuratively, it breeds an overwhelming drive to harness your creativity, hone your skill, and share it with the world. How are you deaf and purposeful and resourceful with your business? Yeah, um, I obviously, I've been making them for a really long time. I feel like I've really um, kind of crafted my technique and honed my technique and how I make them. I make everything by hand. Um you know, incorporating the butter, it, it, you just have to know the texture and the feel and, um, you know, know the outcome of the type of biscuit that you want to be making. And so I feel like I've done that. Um, yeah. And what is that typical texture and feel? Well, um, it, it goes through different stages, right? So you start out with, with your dry ingredients and you incorporate your butter and um, eventually the mixture needs to resemble like um, a certain texture. Uh, and then you add your, your buttermilk, your wet ingredients, and you don't want it to be, you know, too um, liquidy and or not enough. So it's just uh, kind of playing with it till you figure it out. Right. And then obviously repeating it. Same yes. each time. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly right. And, and how have you actually harnessed, uh, obviously, your creativity with this? Yeah, um, I just, I, I, I go back to, like, the playfulness. I just, you know, playing things until I get it right, until it tastes like um, how I, you know, my expectation, and, and then making it a repeatable thing. Wow, that's just amazing. What's that one skill that you actually want to hone on right now? Oh my goodness. Well, I obviously have just ventured into uh, owning my own business. So I feel like there are a lot of skills to hone there. Um, I have, it's not something I've done before. Um, so, you know, I feel, feel pretty comfortable with the biscuits themselves, but the rest of it will probably uh, be quite a learning process. Absolutely. What has this learning process been for you from November, 2020 to right now, when you think of Biscuit Bay? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously evolved quite a bit. Um, I started out of my house and really just kind of started on a whim. Um, 
it's, it's been a, a good journey so far. I launched my website in June and um, have moved into the shared commercial kitchen space. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of one day at a time and, and being able to pivot and, you know, change direction if need be. And, but keeping um, your intent, you know, your original intent. What direction are you heading into right now? You know, I'm not really sure. Um, so I have the online ordering I've been doing, um, you know, trying out different markets. I have really, really enjoyed being in the North Charleston farmer's market. I live in park circle, so it's fun to be a part of my community and see right. people regularly. Um, that's been really great. So, um, I'm just going to kind of keep at it and work on my fall flavors and see what happens. What happens? Why share the the love of biscuits with the world? <laughs> you know, um, it makes me happy. <laughs> I love uh, I love talking to people. I love working with people. I've done some sort of you know customer service. I feel like my entire um, career life. So that uh, portion of it, I really like. I, I like being able to interact with people. Um, I like making people smile, and this has just been a fun way to achieve that. Yes, indeed. And you said this too on your website, quote, to me, there's no better way to do that than do a perfect, imperfect biscuit made from two hardworking hands and a big old heart. What is that imperfect biscuit? Yeah, so I don't get too hung up in, um, you know, each biscuit having 50 layers or, you know, each biscuit being perfectly round. Um, I, I have always kind of worked, I've worked for other businesses and, you know, with other people who like to work with their hands and achieve things that way. And it's, it's about the artistry and the technique. And just because, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be this seemingly perfect thing. Um, you just have to make it really well and make it, the biscuits taste good. And, uh, and yeah, I like that each one's a little different. <laughs> Not flavor-wise, maybe looks-wise, but, you know. That's exactly right. And you said this too, quote, I want my biscuits to create a moment of nostalgia, pull a distant memory to the forefront, tug at a heartstring or two, and maybe even help create new memories. What distant memory has brought that you, that you have brought to the forefront as a result of making biscuits? Yeah, so, I mean, for me specifically, it just kind of reminds me of, you know, growing up and being in the kitchen with my parents and my grandparents and having that family time and you know it's a time of like um family time but like creative creativeness too like um just exploring with baking and cooking and that kind of thing so I feel like that's um definitely something that I think of and you know I, I have a daughter as well and we've made biscuits together too and Ooh. you know it's fun for us to do together yeah absolutely I love to hear that what new memories have you created as a result of Biscuit Babe yeah so I mean uh the whole journey has been you know something that's going to be a new memory um getting in the kitchen with my daughter has been great and you know, her being involved in this on some level, she's, you know, watching and seeing everything that I'm doing. And, um, I think that's been a great experience for her to see, you know, her mom kind of take this on at this point in our lives. So that's been exciting. Oh, absolutely. And you said this too, in your website, quote, wherever they remind you of sitting at your grandma's kitchen table on a Saturday morning, having a family feast are gathering for the holidays. I hope they warm your belly and put a smile on your face, meaning the biscuits, from my kitchen to yours. Let me ask you, if you were to sit at the kitchen table right now with your family, what would you tell them about Biscuit Babe? Oh my gosh. Um, I could go on and on and on. Uh, probably ask for some advice from some people. <laughs> but no, uh, it's just been such a fun thing to kind of fit and take on I haven't done anything like this before and it's just been great like sharing something that I create with people in the community um I think that's one of my biggest takeaways <laughs> here comes another silly question well what more have you learned about biscuits after making biscuits for so long now oh my goodness um 
I have learned that, uh, what have I learned? <laughs> People eat a lot of biscuits. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the biscuits themselves. I still love each and every one of them. Um, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Which one of those biscuits describes you? Oh, I think they all kind of describe me a little. Um, you know, it, it kind of depends on what mood you're in that day as to what biscuit you're going to go for. Um, I obviously have eaten a lot of my own biscuits as well, and I still love all of the flavors that um, that I offer. And, you know, I, I like playing with the flavors and switching it up too, so... Maybe I'll maybe I'll have a new fun favorite with the fall release of the biscuits, but um, yeah. Otherwise, it just savory or sweet. You know what kind of mood am I in? Yes, indeed. And, and, and speaking of which, what's next for Biscuit Babe? Um, I I'm not sure. I think we'll just have to see what kind of unravels as time goes on. Um, I'm gonna keep chugging along and um, see where the road takes me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, I, I thank you again for the biscuits that you gave me last week. And God, it was so great. The buttermilk and the strawberry and the blueberry are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I got to come back by that Celadon market one time uh, again to see what's going on there as far as other things. But Joe yeah. Beth, uh, Massey, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. And if anybody wants to order any biscuits from you, where do they go? They should go to the website, biscuitbay.com. Um, again, I open online ordering on Mondays and then um, do pickup and delivery on Fridays each week. Each week. And if we want to come to one of those markets, how can we do that? Yeah, so I'm definitely at the North Charleston Farmer's Market every Thursday. Um, it's 3 to 7 in the circle, in Park Circle. Um, and then I um, will be doing Celadon um, at their warehouse. Uh, it's the last Sunday of every month. And hopefully some other consistent ones. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Well, Joe Beth, thank you again for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you so much. Thank you.